motherfucking Popeye's chicken with two motherfucking dry ass biscuits and I don't see no Bev. What's good y'all welcome back or welcome if you're new thank you for checking out the video today i low-key hail married it and took a risk i asked my friend to give me something to react to because i honestly just didn't know what to like watch today so he was like you know what i got you react to crazy and psycho moments from my 600 pound life season nine and i said excuse me and then he described the thumbnail to me and it sounded hilarious so i'm gonna just throw up <laughs> I'm gonna throw up the thumbnail because this is why I'm watching it. But original video link will be down in the description. Let's get into the video. Uh, it, it is so hard for me to stop eating. Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Hell My 600 pound life is a to show me. about testing absolute limits. Patients who are suffering from overweight and obesity and who come on the show to change and save their lives. Mm -hmm. Doctor Now helps patients, all of those patients who suffer do, are being bedridden be in physical and mental moments. pain. He helps them by starting on an aggressive diet and workout plan to qualify for weight loss surgery. But in today's video, we'll see some crazy and psycho moments from My 600 Pound Life Season 9. Cindy's Psycho Moment When Cindy featured on the show, she was bedbound, unable to walk. In fact, it wasn't easy for her to even get to her bathroom, as it makes her quite exhausted. Bro. She also has a. And y'all see this, right? You heard what he said? Can't even get to the bathroom because it's exhausted. And they're over here feeding her motherfucking Popeye's chicken with two motherfucking dry ass biscuits. And I don't see no Bev. Makes her quite exhausted. I know she got one, though. She also has a carer who looks after her. But her friends convinced her after some struggles to contact Dr. Now. At first, everything looked all well and quite set up for her to get medical transport to visit Dr. Now. But when the actual time came in and when medical transport arrived at her place, Cindy started driving crazy both the medical staff team and her friend Sandy. Because randomly, she constantly changed her mind in a second. She started making scenarios in her mind whether or not she wants to go. While the other way, she made a medical team to stand waiting as she pretended to take a shower and continued her indecisiveness for decades. Sandy, her friend, broke down into tears as she That's didn't want to lose friend. her best friend. That After is a good-ass friend. After seeing all this, only then, Cindy agreed to go. Well, this isn't just a crazy and psycho moment. In fact, it was also painstakingly infuriating. Carrie's earring habits at work. Food is my highest priority. Oh, is a one quote that she has two boxes. Oh, I didn't bit. Look, I'm not gonna lie. I, I do be fat sometimes. I could do some shit like this myself. I'm not even gonna cap to you. But like, you can't do this all the time at work. Like two boxes every day. That directly sums up Carrie's life. At a doctor's office, Carrie works as a receptionist because it's the only job she can feasibly do. And, and she, she got just Starbucks needs to be sitting in the corner. down all the time. And because her weight can help her to walk quite more and makes it difficult to be comfortable standing on her feet. Well, for her eight hour duty, whenever she walks into her workplace, all she can think about is food. But it is so hard for me to stop eating. She also claims that lunch is the Man. only thing that motivates her to do her best. In fact, that shit do as soon as she gets into her job, she eventually starts craving lie. food and ends up eating her lunch just a few minutes after sitting down. As you can see in the clip, she's hobbling over to the microwave and reaching for the fridge. Even notice how Carrie is winded, especially just after a few words of conversation. Coming in today to answer messages? Okay. Oh damn. She can hardly breathe after uttering some words while talking to someone. Sadly, her lifestyle. Dude, I, it's so crazy to me. Cause like, I mean, I've never been that big per se, but like I've been bigger. And like, I know where it's just like, at least to myself, I feel like I was like, damn, I'm really out of breath from doing this. Like I could barely talk and like motherfuckers be noticing. They'd be like, hey, you good? And I'd be on the phone be like, yeah, bro, I'm straight. <laughs> Over here dying on the phone and shit. But I'm just like, it's most definitely possible to lose it. You just gotta want it. Bedrick's trip to Houston moment. 
with two orders of wings and the order of cheese bread. Ice cream is one of my favorites. Okay, look. I shouldn't be pausing. I don't know why I'm pausing so much. I never paused this much in my life. Does y'all see how sad homie looked, bro? Let me just... Order of cheese bread. Ice cream is one of my favorites. I ain't never seen a nigga look so sad eating one of his favorite foods. <laughs> yo, yo, hey, hey, look, I'm not fucked up for anything I'm saying in this video, bro. The wings and the all Cause that shit look bread. fire, bro. I'd be happy. One of my favorites. This nigga looks this depressed. Clip, you'll see that when Thedrick went onto the show, he was at his breaking point as he could barely walk. Even he had lots of trouble while doing his daily do simple tasks such as going to the restroom or cooking a meal for himself. Thedrick had to travel to Texas from Florida to seek help by Dr. Now. Hey, that's what's up. Well, his mother had to help him in their minivan with all the seating down in the trunk when he decided to meet Dr. Now to be starting his journey. In fact, during his whole trip, he was not even able to use the bathroom because of his heavy body. Damn. On the other hand, he was not able to get out of the vehicle on his own. For that trip, they had to drive 700 miles, but while on their way, there were so many stopping points in which fast food restaurants were also included. No! With him, his mother was also there, as she wanted to be a part of his weight loss journey. Um, but, but during I guess their way to Dr. Now's really place, she kept stopping at fast food places to get their meals. What a support! I just stuck to salads, vegetables, and meat. Well, that's good. Dr. Now would okay, yeah, for sure good. not be happy after knowing all that he was making stops in unhealthy fast food places. Yeah. According to Thedrick and his mom, they already knew that these were not the best choices, but they were hoping that reaching at Dr. Now's office would help them out. But he definitely made some psycho and crazy unhealthy choices on the trip down. Carrie's husband. Just by the looks of her, as a viewer, we all knew already she was on the brink of eating herself to death. While the craziest aspect of Carrie's story is that she can pinpoint her exact behaviors and actually she's understandably self-aware about where she needs help as she knows that her weight is out of control. In fact, her body is getting to a breaking point, but despite the fact that she knows all that, she still can't seem to get her eating habits under control. Wait a minute, is this the same lady from earlier? This is the same lady from earlier, bro. She's eating the same pasta. Wait, she's back for a part two? Well, in her episode, she gripes about her struggles and efforts to get rid of her overeating. As her Hold up, bro. I gotta go back. Ain't no fucking way. Digger, look. Literally, it's the same goddamn shirt. Okay, yeah, nah, she's back for a part two. Just by the looks of her, as a viewer, we all knew already she was on the brink of eating herself to death. While the craziest aspect of Carrie's story is that she can pinpoint her exact behaviors and actually she's understandably self-aware about where she needs help as she knows that her weight is out of control. In fact, her body is getting to a breaking point, but despite the fact that she knows all that, she still can't seem to get her eating habits under control. Yeah, you gotta do well, something about it. in her episode, she gripes about her I struggles know it's hard, and though. efforts to get rid of her overeating, as her husband is the one who feeds her a large amount of food for dinner. That Even on the camera- Big- oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all ever seen somebody carry a plate of food like this? I've never had to carry my plate of food like it is a child. This nigga is serving her up. Large amount of food for dinner. Even on the camera, she was seen crying and telling the crew that it's quite hard for her to focus on work, her family, and her husband. Because our relationship Bro, is so strained. you can't strength. be enabling her like I this. I miss my husband terribly bad. All because of her overeating, as she eats too much, and her life is drastically Way affected too by much. all this. Well, she complains about her weight and her life, but still she asks her husband to fill her plate by putting all that that looks like a pound Come or two on, of pasta bro, and a kicker and to complete the multi-thousand calorie meal, he piles four uh -huh. garlic breadsticks on top. This four? is all oh, sick, my psycho, God. and crazy. How much Carrie consumes her food, and she's aware that she has no control over all that stuff. Melissa M's Craziest Story 
The origin of Melissa's story was one of the craziest and saddest moments. What the moments. fuck was that liquid? Was she eating soup out of a tub? What the fuck? Is that the supposed to be The origin of that Melissa's serious? story was one of the craziest I don't know what the and fuck saddest that is, moments that shit of the nasty. episode of season nine. Actually, when she was a child, like other girls, she also had a beautiful and strong bond with her father. She even looked up to him all the time. But however, her parents' relationship was quite shattered as it was on the rocks Man, when I she turned eight. Machines. Therefore, after some time, sleep her father yet. left them, so she began to gain weight as she started to binge eating to cope up with her stress. I have a hard time facing the reality of my life because at my size, at my weight. In fact, at the age of 13, when she weighed 250 pounds, her mother started verbally abusing her for being overweight and telling her that she was ugly and she was fat. Because of all that, she lost her weight, but another trauma hit her when she was just 15. She got pregnant and her boyfriend left her, so she had to have an abortion. Damn. Because of this major and tragic incident, she fell into depression at the age of 18, which led her to almost 400 pounds. She also dropped out of school and got re-enrolled because she always wanted to study like other students. But That's in her good. life, there came a point when she ended up dropping out of college as she had to get a job. But at the age of 27, to deal with the life out of it, all she did was eat and work. Well, as we know, her entire world was flipped around. She admitted that food was the major thing that filled the void that she needed. Well, at 35, food, she was getting sick all the time and lost her mother. But because of her weight, Melissa had to miss her mother's funeral. And at that time, her only support system was her friend Shay. That heartbreaking moment was the craziest and saddest story moment, which only made Melissa's journey that much more important. Carrie's transformation. Bro, she's back? Well, if you haven't watched Carrie's episode yet, then there's a spoiler alert, as this entry is actually a number one craziest moment of her episode of season nine that actually happened once it ends. Or am I tripping? Spoiler is all about Carrie's transformation, which can make you surprised and actually a jaw-dropping moment. Bro, hold up, bro. I'm this is finna piss me off. Is she back for is she back for a third time, bro? Oh no, the other okay, no. So her name was Melissa. This is Carrie. Okay, this is a whole new this is a whole new person. Okay, never mind. She finally accomplished her goal by struggling against all odds. Well, who doesn't love a good happy ending? Right? We all do, right? Hell At the yeah. end of her episode, you'll see Carrie's self-awareness as it came full circle, and she was able to successfully lose her unwanted weight hey. just to be qualified to get bariatric surgery under the supervision of Dr. Now. That is what's up. You may remember, as earlier they mentioned in her episode, when she griped over her relationship with her husband. Also, Wait she confessed minute. that she was worried that- Wait a minute. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, dude. Am I tripping? So this is the same. <laughs> this is the same lady. I looked at the wrong fucking name, dude. Okay, so it is the same. She's back for a third time. Dude, I mean, like like they said, we love a good transformation story. But at least this Social time she's back for a good reason. She lost over her tragic journey. I'm quite happy to add, Carrie in today list of 600 pound patients who despite the craziness of being obese, was able to turn her life around. Well, That's as a so. viewer, I can only hope and wish that other psycho patients should learn from her example, that they can change their lifestyle and have the courage to prove to themselves, their loved ones, and everyone that they're capable of true change. Well, that's all, folks. Bro, did Thanks I for watching. Beta? And if you guys found it interesting, Hell I'd yeah. much appreciate it if you commented down below about the video and Bro. leave a thumbs up. Nah. Last but not least, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. I deadass got clickbaited. Mm. The fucking thumb. I showed y'all the thumbnail at the beginning. Yo, they fucking clickbaited me. Wow. Okay, good clickbait, I guess. The video was interesting. But like, damn. Okay, I can fuck with it. <laughs> Yo, y'all let me know down in the comments what y'all thought of this reaction. Do y'all want to see me do more stuff like this? Hey, I enjoyed it. It was interesting to watch. It was just different too. So I was like, this is cool. But y'all let me know. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all next one. I love y'all. Peace. I may finesse the bitch if I'm able. Uh, run up, you catch a clip, get disabled. Uh, I never kill my brother. I ain't able to cane.